friends, and me, and we're back with some more Spirit Hunter Deathmark 2. Let's do this. I think we were not gonna talk to them yet because we were gonna go to the computer lab first. All right, let's see. Uh, I think it was faculty room, actually. The faculty room is empty at this time of night. I need to find that laptop quick. Well, there it is. I'm gonna take a peek see here, though. <laughs> Several teachers' desks are lined up here. Everything is clean and tidy. Beth Sakamoto is a big part of that, given her meticulous personality. Why? Do you have a crush on her? Because I kind of do. Bow, chicka, bow, bow. All right. Hmm. There's a laptop on the desk. We can check the data on the floppy disk with this. You do the work, Mashita. This isn't my cup of tea. Ch fine. Mashita turns on the laptop and then inserts the floppy disk. Hmm. There are documents from 10 years ago. Judging by the file format, it should still be somewhat readable using the pre-installed word processing software. I shouldn't have to install a special reader. Mashita may as well be speaking a foreign language. I don't understand a thing they said. After a while, some text finally appears on the screen. This is... I'm writing this here just in case. I summoned Kei to the forest. K is Mitsuru Kuromine. He's a hooligan. He'll probably bring his gang of thugs with them. So I've decided to bring my hunting rifle. I've become a demon, both physically and mentally. The next fox demon of this cursed forest. I'll terrorize them and kill every single one of them. Even if I die or sacrifice my soul, I shall destroy my enemies. Masaki Kiyohara. Seems like a farewell note. And this Masaki Kiyohara dude... He's probably our Mr. Kokuri. Adding Kiyohara's note to the other information we have thus far, we could see the whole story. Ten years ago, Kiyohara's wife and child were murdered by delinquents at Lake S. The boys were junkies addicted to Fox Lakata, and the one who sold them was Hooligan K. K was Kudo Mine, a delinquent from Konoehara Academy. After re learning his identity, Kiyohara summoned Kuromine and his friends to the forest with the intention of getting revenge. And at that moment, he became the fox demon of the cursed forest. Wearing white clothing complete with the fox mask, he copied how Mr. Kokuri looked. He probably saw something of himself in the spirit who killed hooligans that disgraced the shrine. Poor guy. However, he never got his revenge. Kuromine and his friends killed him and buried him in the forest. That skeletal corpse was Kiyohara. His resentment still lingered on even after his death. Thus, his regret became a spirit. Oddly enough, a spirit that looked like Mr. Kokuri, and that is how his revenge began claiming hooligans addicted to Fox Lakata, one of them being Kakuda. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Poor guy. I guess we've learned enough. Let's report this to y Yasuoka and the others in the infirmary. Huh. What's wrong, Mashita? Nothing. For some reason, I feel like I've heard the name Mitsuru Kiromine before. When you were still a detective? Yeah. Oh well, no need to force myself to remember right now. Let's just get back to the infirmary. I don't know. Hopefully he remembers soon, because maybe he'll know if he's dead or not already. We should share the information we have about Mr. Kokori with the others. They should be waiting for it. Is there anything we haven't done yet, though? Is there? <laughs> Is there anything we haven't done yet? Should we still be looking around the forest and stuff? Maybe. Ooh, they're making me second guess myself. There's that big rock that we still haven't figured out yet. I think it's down the serpent path. Huge mm -hmm. stone is blocking the path. It's wrapped around the stone. Cool. Oh, it won't even let me touch it now. Okay. Hmm. 
trying to think. I'm pretty sh pretty sure we can't check anything else in the old building. Oh, every time he, sa he says that, I second guess myself. Like, um, let's go to the library. There's no one here. Let's go somewhere else. Okay. So it's not gonna... And I'm pretty sure the faculty room's done. Let's check the student council room. All right, so now um, let's go check the connecting corridor again. It's all red still. Massive statue of Guardian Fox stands here. It's darkened. Let's check the clock tower. I see the entrance to the clock tower. Open the door. The door is locked tight. Looks like we're not getting in right now. Okay. Let's check the shrine front gate. Traffic cone and barrier are blocking the way. I imagine they're there to prevent people from going in. However, this might have the opposite effect. They're quite attention grabbing. It's not difficult to bypass the barrier. All right. Having this like right here, so creepy. I bet a daytime is not as creepy, but um, okay, let's go to. I wonder if we should go to the shrine. Are they gonna let me actually look at anything here? I wonder. Okay, I have no business here. I better go to the new building. Okay, so nothing missing here. I wonder if it'll let me go to the actual shrine then. Let me see if we can. Oh, we've got no business here. What? Wait. There are other places we need to inspect? Like where? I guess just the infirmary then, right? Well, at least it lets me know so I don't go running around to every single room trying to figure it out. Yeah, all those doors won't let me in either. All right. Welcome back, you two. Mind telling us what happened out there? I tell them all the events that have happened up to this point including the moment when the departed devoured Mr. Kokuri and transformed, a sight that only I could see, a sight I wish was merely a hallucination. What the? A spirit transformed after devouring another spirit? I've never heard such a thing before. What a monster. It doesn't make any sense. Don't scare me like that. The three mark bearers all take this news differently. Shocked and confused. Honestly, I feel all their emotions. What if this transformation made them stronger? That explained the red lights from earlier. Does that mean things have taken a turn for the worse? Most likely. I wonder what they're planning next now that they've gained power and transformed. More terrifying things may be in store to store it. Bleh. More terrifying things may be in store ahead. Awful. <sighs> A heavy silence falls over the infirmary. The departed has grown stronger, and there's nothing we can do about it. Our sense of fear grows alongside the sense of powerlessness that we feel. I'm calling. And the phone on the desk is ringing. I should answer it. Maybe. Hello? I've charged Kakuda's phone. Have you checked what's on it? Of course. I'll tell you what it says now, so you better take notes. I prepare to write down the contents of Kakuda's phone as Maruhashi relays it to me. There's a series of messages from MK. MK had trusted Ma Kakuda to manage the fox, the cod, and the forest. I bet that's 
That's the freaking guy. That's the guy. But when their secret was about to be exposed, he told Kakuda to dispose of them. He threatened to tell the world about Kakuda's assault case if Kakuda betrayed him. Kakuda reluctantly agreed to help. MK didn't send any messages after two weeks, until today after school, when Kakuda got two new messages from him. However, the text was too garbled to decipher. Is that why he was like, I've got to go? MK. I recall the name... Oh, excuse me, out there. I recall the time I saw Kakuda in that storage room. He was murmuring something while looking at his phone. I was summoned. I have to go. Or else I'll be killed. Okay. It's pretty clear he was acting under MK's direction. That Kakuda is a pretty messed up kid for someone who's a disciplinary committee member. <sighs> Kakuda didn't have anything to do with the Lake S incident. However, he got himself mixed up with Fox Lakata because of MK's blackmail. And that's how he met his end. Mr. Kokuri, Kiyohara won't forgive anyone who's addicted to Fox Lakata. Thanks, Mahuhashi. <clears throat> I, I was just repaying my debt since I caused you trouble before, all right? I'm hanging up now. Say hi to Miss Yasuoka Yasuoka for me. Huh? We're done talking. <laughs> that was quick, eh? Hidu's lips curled into an awkward smile. Something doesn't feel right. What's wrong, Hidu? N nothing. By the way, Yashiki, what was on his phone? Come on, tell us already. Sure. I tell the others everything Maruhashi told me. Hey, MK. You think they're the person named K mentioned in the Lake S murder case? Uh... Maybe. I do. In Ki Kiyohara's farewell note, K's full name was Mitsuru Kiromine, which meets the K from the Lake S case, has the initials MK. It's pretty likely fit for him to also be the MK who was messaging Kakuda. Kudomine continued to gather Fox Lakata secretly even after the Lake S incident. He exploited Kakuda's weakness and had him watch over his crops. Huh. What's with the frown, Mashita? I knew it. I know Mitsuru Kidomine. That jogged my memory. So? Is he a criminal you've arrested in the past? No, the opposite. Mitsuru Kidomine is a cop. He's a career bureaucrat in the Me Metropolitan Police Department. His pops is in the top brass, so he joined the cops because everyone expected he'd just follow in his pops' footsteps. Wait a minute. He wasn't prosecuted, but Kudomino was still suspect in the Lake S case, and he's still selling Fox Lakata. How is it possible that a fiend like that can still be a cop? Cops are just people. They're saints and fiends in every group of people. Doctors, teachers, military cops. And like, and like I said earlier, his daddy's top brass. Sweeping a case like this under the rug would take some effort, but his pops was so high up, he could definitely take care of it. Of course. Are you serious? So he escaped punishment for Lake S and his blackmailing students to do his dirty work even now? What a shameless scumbag. That's exactly the kind of guy Kudomine is. A selfish asshole who'd swoop... A selfish asshole who'd stoop to anything so long as to give him the slightest benefit. I'll be able to read some point soon, I promise. Maybe I need some more coke. In addition, Kiyohara's spirit is unable to find peace due to that miscreant. How unforgivable. <clears throat> is there anything more we can do, Majita? Nope, it's out of our hands. No matter what evidence we find, we'll never be able to take him to trial. What do you mean by that? Kuromine is already dead. I feel like that's everything, right? Like, except for that last one, actually, they were still alive and got murdered. I remember reading about it in the newspaper about half a month ago. He died while relaxing at the lake. Accidental death, they say. And that lake he was relaxing at? You guessed it, Lake S. What a coincidence. Or maybe it wasn't a coincidence at all. For an arrogant, entitled man with power like Kudomine, the de deceased must have seemed as power powerless as the living. To him, spirits were just another made-up construct like morals or dignity that he could disregard. That's why he could kill so easily. But for those like us, 
We know the grudges of the dead aren't just ghost stories. The deceased are not powerless. That concludes our investigation for the night. For everything... Not everything is cleared up. There are some mysteries that remain unsolved. But there's no one left who can resolve those mysteries. Both Kakuda and Kunomine are both are dead. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who's your good boy? Who's your good boy? Who's your good boy? He's a handsome little man, isn't he? Yes, he. Oh, you got so much fur coming off of you. Oh, this is a heat, huh, buddy? This is a heat, huh, nudie? I start getting. I shouldn't have kissed him. Go, Papa. I start getting ready to leave school, though I'm still feeling uneasy for some reason. Welcome back, Yashiki. Did you lock the door? Yeah. Do they force you to work as a janitor, too? You're putting way too much effort into this. Hey, we can't let people loiter inside the school or the number of victims is going to increase. As soon as the words leave my mouth, I feel how empty they are. Hiro and Mashita are the only ones in the infirmary. There's no sign of Yasuoka. Where's Yasu Yasuoka? Blech. I called the taxi and sent her home. I mean, this is usually bedtime for geezers, right? She's way too energetic for her age. You're really rude, you know that? If I hear you're being charged with harassment, I'm totally going to believe you're guilty. I've never harassed anyone in my life. Shall we head home now, too? I'll drive you both to the station as thanks. All right. Huh. But we didn't put his soul to rest either. Huh. Let's get out of here quick. All right, let's save real quick. Never know what's going to happen the minute we walk out that door. After checking whether or not the door is locked, we leave this special building and then we head to the main gate. For now, there's nothing we can really do about the red lights in the school. If it is really a spirit's doing, everything should be back to normal once the sun rises. By the way, Yashiki, give me back my paper bag. You can keep it if you like it so much, though. Let's give it back. You can take it. Why would I want such a dangerous thing anyway? Hopefully I did just get him killed. I take the gun from the paper bag and hand it back to Mashita. Huh? What's with the weird look? I can't find it anywhere. The Petri dish. What? Huh? Where did you last see it? The faculty room, where I took out the floppy disk. What in the world are you doing now? I just want to go home already. I can't find the Petri dish anywhere. Have you seen it, Hiru? Well, why are you asking me? You probably forgot it somewhere. Just go look for it tomorrow. Oh, she's acting really sus now. But... I'm exhausted. I really don't want to search for anything. Just do it tomorrow, okay? Ugh. That Petri dish is really important. Hiru isn't going to help, and I don't have the energy to persuade her. It's not just Hiru either. Mashita and I are also exhausted. <laughs> sus, I'm sussed. My car slowly leaves the school and heads toward M Station. They should be able to catch the last train. Say Yashiki. Mashita murmurs in the passenger seat, eyes fixed on the scenery outside. I glance at him, indirectly telling him to continue. He must be tired. His complexion looks darker than usual. Kakuto went to the Fox Forest this evening. He got an order from MK, Kudomine. Yeah, he did. Oh yeah, and Kudomine's dead. Don't you find that weird? Huh. Now that he feel, mentions it, something about that doesn't feel right. 
It's not her, is it? And she stole the 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 mushrooms. The thought gets stuck in my head. What's wrong with it? Kudomina's orders, maybe? What do you want about? Kudomina had Kakuda protecting the secret of Fox Lakata, so there's nothing strange about Kakuda going to the forest. It's a message that's weird. Yeah, because it was garbled and we couldn't read it. It's not that content. The issue is who sent it, and when the message arrived, Kudomine died half a month ago. Oh. So it's pretty unlikely that MK is Kudomine. The previous messages before Kudomine's death must be from him. But the message he got today was strange, even the fact that the text was garbled in the first place. How could Kakuda even read that message when it was garbled? Everything's just so confusing. Hehehe. <laughs> Out of nowhere, I hear a laugh coming from the back seat. This case has already been solved. Both of you are such worry warts. You're gonna make yourself so bald early. Ha ha ha. Look at you acting all carefree the moment we leave the school. Your laugh's so annoying. Shut your damn mouth. Ha ha, I'm sorry. I can't stop. Her laughter gets even more hysterical. Are you okay, Yudu? Hee <laughs> hee. Hey, listen up. I looked at my phone and got a message. Ha ha ha. What? A message? Kill Hooligan. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. He do. At that moment, countless strange objects start covering Hiru's face. They're mushrooms. Is this Mr. Kokudi's curse? What the frick? I thought it was over already. What's happening to my face? Hiru claws at her face over and over again. Blood is flowing from her skin. Calm down, Hiru. This can't be real. No way, no way. The mushrooms covering Hiru's face grow unnaturally bigger and bigger. Until finally they explode. What? Fresh blood fills the interior of my car, dying in my red vi vision red. And it disappears in an instant. It vanishes along with Hudu's corpse, leaving no trace of her behind. What? How did this happen? I can't believe this. Crap. Where did we mess up? Our stunned silence fills the air for what feels like an eternity. Although in actuality, the silence only lasts for five minutes. Did we mess up? I thought I was going back to... I bet anything I had to go back to the resting site and tell him that the guy's dead. Yashiki, look, this was in the back seat. In Mashita's hand is Hiru's phone and the Petri dish, except there's nothing inside, not the Fox Lakata and not even the dead centipede. Why is this Petri dish here? If you want my best guess, I'd say Hiru stole it from you, probably when you were on the call with Maduhashi. I remember she was acting kind of strange. But why would she do that? Have you forgotten? That research addict wanted to study those Fox Lakata, but if she tried to do, ask to do it, I'd have her just confiscated it. Hence, she resorted to other measures. Oh, Mr. Kokuri despises any hooligans who want to get their hands on Fox Lakata. That's why Hiru... Mr. Kokuri was devoured by the departed. However, his grudge still lingers on. Because of that, Hiru was cursed and killed. I thought because he got eaten already, I couldn't do anything about it and that we had helped him already. I completely forgot that you actually had to go to the resting place and, and like finish it off. This is the first character I've accidentally gotten killed. Oh no. Oh, look at her phone, Yashiki. 
My eyes turn to the phone in front of me. A list of incoming messages appears on the screen, and the most recent message is from... MK. MK's message is garbled. I think Hiru was able to read it, though, just like what happened with Kakuda. Say, Mashita, who do you think is the MK that sent those messages to Kakuda and Hiru? You think it might be the late Kudomine? Oh, come on. It's pretty obvious at this point. There's got to be another MK. Another MK? Mr. Kokuri is Masaki Kirohara. His initials are also MK. Also, Mr. Kokuri could be abbreviated as MK. I dropped Mashita off at M Tower Station. Both of us just want to be alone now. I drive on through the night road, heading toward Kujo Mansion. I got her killed! Grief and remorse fill my heart. I lost a friend. That's why I kept saying, did we forget anything? That's why I kept saying it. I should have just gone to the grave site. Oh my, remember I kept saying like, I feel like I'm missing something. Man, that's why he kept saying it. He was trying to get me to go put his soul to rest. As soon as I arrive at the mansion, the phone rings. Oh, who's calling me this late at night? I hope they're just hang up soon. Except the phone doesn't stop ringing. I give in an answer. Hello? It's Kinugawa. Sorry for calling so late. What's wrong? Um, I can't stop thinking about Mr. Kokuri's case. Are you all right? I survived at least, but Kakura and Hyudu are dead. Huh? The karate man? And that lady in the white clothing, right? Yeah, I failed again. I share the night's events with Michiho. I realize I shouldn't talk about it with a student even though she is trying to help me. However, my mouth starts going before I could even think about it. And it'd be more trouble to stop talking once I've started. Maybe I'm just too exhausted to care. Oh, I see. I get why you're blaming yourself, but it's not your fault. It's the Departeds. We need to put a stop to the Departed quickly. We'll help you figure out who it is. Why? Why are you still helping me even after everything terrible you've gone through? Is it really just curiosity? At first, yeah, but now I'm doing this because I don't want you to die. You saved our lives and you understand our curse. That made both of us happy because we didn't think we'd ever have the guts to tell anyone about it again. Michio. Remember this, Mr. Yoshiki. You're not just a teacher to both Hime and I. You're our precious teacher. Me? Their precious teacher? I never expected anyone to call me that when I'd been told I'd have to fill in as a temporary teacher. I should feel some kind of pride over it, but it triggered a memory of something Mashita told me. What you should do is start looking at everyone around you as a potential suspect. <sighs> um, are you listening, Mr. Yoshiki? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was spacing out a little bit. Guess I'm just exhausted from tonight. Well, that's natural. Sorry for taking your time. Have some rest. Good night. Suspect everyone, huh? Oh. That's tough to do. Yeah, I bet. I can't believe I got her killed! The night goes on, yet I can't bring myself to go to sleep. I'm afraid to close my eyes. No, afraid to even turn off the lights. My eyes flit over the window displaying the moonlight. <laughs> my eyes flit over to the window displaying the moonlit night outside, triggering a memory from earlier tonight. The departed was roaming about with their new body. I recall what they said. And now I'm convinced that you're my real husband. All these incidents must have been some sort of test to see if I'm worthy of being their husband. And it seems like those tests have ended tonight. The Departed has acknowledged me as their real husband. The ending that the Departed desires. I feel like the day is fast approaching when I'll be asked to exchange vows at the school grounds, all lit in red. Man, I almost want to save scum, but I won't. I won't. We're going to keep it this way. Poor you do. All right, friends. So that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button and subscribe. Check out our memberships for some cool stuff. If you like live gaming content, I have my Twitch link below in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Uh, 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 watching.